So today I'm talking about is breakfast sabotaging your day? Just like you said, uh, Karen, breakfast is the most important meal, but is that really true? So much has been done in science, so many discoveries, because our bodies are created in a way that the human being cannot understand it. So we keep having um, research saying this and that. So let's find out. Uh, this session is, um, is offered to you through the courtesy of Sahara Nutrition. So we know common expressions about breakfast. You know, there are two sets of people. There are those who don't eat breakfast. They have a problem with breakfast. I cannot eat breakfast. I feel nauseated. I don't have time for breakfast. And I don't care about breakfast. And then we have the other lot who says, I cannot do without breakfast. It's do or die. I eat my largest meal in the morning. So we have two camps, those who don't care and don't eat, and we have those who eat breakfast. So is anyone better? So let's see what science told us. Is it so important to have breakfast? It's either a yes or a no, because science has shown us differently. So yes, breakfast is one of the most important meals because you need to break the fast. You've been fasting for so many hours, and so when you wake up in the morning, you need breakfast. Also, because you've been fasting, we know that your brain uses glucose for energy, like ready glucose for energy, not stored glucose. So when you wake up in the morning, your brain doesn't have any glucose. So you have to eat so that the brain has some glucose to utilize. Studies have shown that children who do not take breakfast perform poorly. In fact, they perform less than 5%. And these studies have been shown around the world. So, and it's related to the brain energy. You need glucose, ready glucose. So when you eat food, this food becomes sugar and your brain uses the glucose for energy. So when the child wakes up early in the morning, they go to school without eating breakfast. There is not sufficient energy. So their concentration level is very low. Maybe at snack time, you have packed something sweet. So yes, they will take something sweet, sugar. They will be hyperactive for like a few minutes and then the sugar is gone. And then lunchtime comes and you give them a meal because they're hungry, they'll eat. And what's likely to happen is they're going to sleep. So what happens in the evening, your child comes home, the whole morning, the concentration has been zero. So you sometimes people even move children from one school to the other because they're not doing well. But the problem is actually that they're not having breakfast. And also studies with adults have shown that adults who don't eat breakfast are more likely to binge. They're more likely to be overweight because you, you will crave, you'll crave sugar, you'll crave energy. And so you end up taking any snacks that are available to you. And then people who don't take breakfast are likely to have a headache at the end of the day. If you have migraine and you don't take breakfast, you're likely to have migraine most days of the week. So it's very important to take breakfast. And this is what many studies have shown. So if you take breakfast, well done. But then we have new science that is showing that breakfast is actually not that important. The fasting science has put this wrong. Because if you read about this gentleman who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2016, he discovered this autophagy. Autophagy is a process where the body eliminates dead cells and eliminates toxic material and even you know cancer when you stay so many hours without uh, eating and studies have shown that intermittent fasting has been used to treat cancer and actually has also been used to to uh, to reverse diabetes a lot of patients who go on to intermittent fasting are more likely to reverse their diabetes because you're not eating as much so it means that if you're not eating breakfast it's not that bad, but are you, you're either eating breakfast or you're doing intermittent fasting. But yes, it is important to take breakfast, but some other studies have shown that it's not that important. Because if I have somebody who doesn't take breakfast and they're diabetic, I don't have to force them to take breakfast. I will work with them and I will just make sure they eat so many hours a day and they fast so many hours a day. So I don't force people to eat breakfast anymore after all this new science. So what's the solution? So what do you need to do? What do you need to eat? For you to eat breakfast, it also depends on your metabolic rate and of course your behavior. Some people, they need to eat something in order to have a clarity to miss their day. They cannot go without breakfast, like we said earlier. 
Others, they don't start to get hungry until noon, so they don't eat. So who are you? Are you the one who doesn't take breakfast? You need until noon, or are you the one who has to eat breakfast? So it really depends on your metabolic rate and your behavior. Also, do you engage in a lot of sports and physical activity? If you engage in a lot of physical activity, you're more likely to need a good breakfast in the morning because your metabolic rate is a lot higher. And when you fasted, you wake up very hungry and you need something. But if your body starts slowly, you sit at the desk and you don't do any exercise, then yes, breakfast might not be that important for you. So breakfast is also important for people who are on medication because some drugs you have to take on a full stomach. And then our children for growth and development, they need to meet their needs, they need to meet their daily needs. And for a child to be able to do without breakfast, it means they have to be trained not to take breakfast, but we don't have to take children through that. They just must eat breakfast, so they're getting all their nutrients and they're getting energy. Also, depending on your workload, you know the people who work in construction, or if your workload is a lot, you know, you have to use your hands, use your major muscles to work, then you probably maybe need breakfast because then your metabolic rate is as high as the other person who exercises a lot. So what should you eat anyway? Um, food, I think that food ties us to our community and our traditions and it's the thing that makes us feel good and connected. So we have traditions about food. When it comes to eating, I remember sometimes I recommend to my clients, why don't you eat, um, your protein in the morning and avoid it at night. And then because they have grown up eating tea and bread for breakfast, if you tell them to eat meat and, and rice and vegetables for breakfast, they think you're crazy because that is the tradition. That is a tradition. But however, you can eat anything for breakfast. When it comes to protein, most people don't believe that they can, the only protein they can eat for breakfast is eggs, but that's not true. Meat is protein, chicken is protein, fish is protein. So you can, beans is protein, you can eat anything for breakfast. It's only a state of mind and it's our traditions. But if you want to improve your breakfast, improve your health, then you can move things around. So even though traditions, these are some recommendations. You can have smoothie for breakfast and your smoothie, you can make it, you can make it from green vegetables. You can add some nuts, you can add seeds, you can have avocado, you can have coconut or other healthy fats. You can have bananas, berries, or other fruits that make it tasty. Anything, anything that's available to you. And you can always make your smoothie with milk or without milk. You can just add water to it and then blend everything and drink it. And please note that this is plant. The other thing is uh, you can soak. You know, it's good to eat raw oats rather than cook it. You can soak your oats and then add fresh fruit. You can add um, dried fruit. You can add also nuts and seeds, and you can also add you know, some honey or some maple syrup. So the choice is yours. What do you normally eat for breakfast? Then we have the classic breakfast, and these are for people who like bread and bagels. So whenever you have your bread or you have your bagel, have it with some vegetables, have it with some protein, have it with avocado. You can have nuts with it. And this is healthy. Remember, you've not seen anything here, sausages, bacon, butter, no. This is, we're talking about healthy breakfast because we want all of you guys to be healthy. Then you can also just eat the good old meal. Just wake up and eat your leftover from dinner. You can eat your vegetables, you can eat your rice, like you can see here. This is maybe some chicken curry, you have rice, you have um, some salad and you have beetroot. This is uh, maybe chicken salad as well, some pieces of chicken, some salad, some tomatoes. And this is some rice, some vegetables and also pieces of chicken. And um, this is, um, this is uh, maybe a West African meal where you, you mix um, rice with meat and then you can have it with some vegetables. This is a salad just made from cheese, olives, tomatoes, and uh, lettuce. And this is also a West African meal where this is, um, this is pounded yam and then you have sauce, meat sauce. And these are some pictures that some friends sent. You know, so you can have, this is bread and avocado. This is very good because when you have something like a fat avocado, it holds you, you, you know, you're eating, you have energy longer. 
Because the problem of just eating a piece of bread and going, that piece of bread will be done, will be gone, utilized in 30 minutes. And that means then you don't have glucose and then you're staying long hours without food. And staying long hours without food, you get things like acidity, you get constipation, you get headaches, you get fatigued. So if you add avocado, that avocado is a fat and it's, it provides, it helps to sustain your energy longer. And of course, also when you add a protein like egg to your, uh, to your bun, that's also helpful. But because I'm a dietitian, I always want to see more. I want to see some vegetables at least. And this uh, lady here had some avocado and carrots and, um, and cucumber. This might look very little, but as long as you have some kind of fat, avocado, you have some nuts in your breakfast, and you have some coconut in your breakfast, it, that is going to, it's going to last you a lot longer. So the person who eats this and the one who eats just a slice of bread, like if you compare these two, this person's food is more likely to last her longer because of the fat that um, is in the diet. So adding things like avocado and salad is very good. And then this is uh, maybe some porridge and nuts. Nuts are also very, very filling. And so you don't always have to eat you know, the sausages, the bacons for you to get full. Those are really junk food. Occasionally you can have them in your diet, but it's not something I can recommend that you have in your meal every day. So you can have some porridge, you can have some yogurt with nuts. That is very filling and it can last you like four to six hours. And the good thing, the reason why we should always aim to eat breakfast is because also when you eat breakfast, you don't crave. When you eat breakfast, you can avoid snacking. So people who eat breakfast are more likely to maintain a healthier weight than people who skip breakfast. And here is a meal. Here is some, um, um, you call it pap or stiff maize meal or stiff corn meal with some fish and some vegetable curry. There is nothing wrong with eating this for breakfast. This is a healthy meal. Eat it for breakfast. And then here we have carrots, we have some naan, and we have some egg. Not a bad choice of breakfast. So what it really means is that you can eat anything for breakfast. The choice is yours. So don't limit yourselves. Let it not just be bread, 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 or cereal, cereal, cereal. In fact, a real, um, you know, a real African and a real Caribbean, they, they, they never used to have, they don't have those cereals in their traditional diet. So it's not, it's not something you, you eat, it's not something that's available to you traditionally. So eat your traditional food. Our traditional meals are healthy as long as we, might, we, we try to control the amount of fat that goes into your food. So you've seen various choices of your breakfast. Let's just quickly go again. You can have a smoothie, you can have some oats and seeds and you can add fruits in your oats. You can have the good, you know, a bagel or bread or a bun with avocado, with salad, with some fish. You can have salads. You can have a meal that has your protein, your chicken, your rice, and your vegetables. You can have salad for breakfast. You can have some rice. You can have your traditional meal for breakfast, but always try to have vegetables. You can have your bread and avocado, and you can just have a salad. You know, you can just have a vegetable salad. And as long as you add some nuts or avocado, it actually lasts you very long. And do not be ashamed to eat your meal for, in fact, if you eat this meal for breakfast, the next time you'll be looking for a meal is three o'clock in the afternoon because you will not be hungry. And so you're not snacking, you have sufficient energy. And when you're not hungry, you're stable emotionally, you work better with the team and life goes on. So, Remind us, one, your health is your wealth. So if your breakfast is important, make some healthy choices, improve your breakfast. Please note that most of these um, recommendations that we've made, they are not, we've not recommended any junk food. We've not recommended any sausages. We've not recommended any bacon. We've not recommended all those, um, all those processed meats. Just eat your food as natural as possible because your health is your wealth. It starts with your breakfast. Start a day in health. That means start your day eating something healthy, something that's going to be something that's nutritious, that's going to supply nutrients to your body, and something that is going to provide you energy for longer. Because when you start the day, you need more energy. 
As you close the day, you need less. And last but not least, when you feed yourself what your body needs, when it needs it, that's love. So give your body some TLC and sit down and enjoy a good breakfast. Thank you very much. I will take questions and comments. Thank you very much, um, Alice. As always, that's a really informative um, uh, session. And, you know, and I mean, there's a couple of questions that have been placed in the chat box, which I'll just quickly ask you. So mm. once somebody asked the question, um, can your breakfast ever be too heavy if you eat your leftovers? Um, because rice is filling. Is this mm -hmm. Yes, it can be so heavy. It can be heavy if you put a lot of food on your plate. So just remember, it's about portion size. And yes, you can actually eat a huge meal for breakfast, and you will feel sleepy, and you will not be able to work. So just like we said last time, it's about your portion sizes. Half your plate should always be vegetables, a quarter starch, and a quarter protein. So you can have your rice, but how much? You can have your meat, but how much? You can have your vegetables, but how much? Yes, thank, thank you. you very much. Now, no. I made a comment. I remember um, when I went to Jamaica for the very first time and I was given yam and green bananas and I thought, there's no way I'm good, you know, would I ever be able to eat this for breakfast? Yeah. A group of friends and I had um, the yam and the green bananas and it was um, some, uh, it was corned beef was what actually was what served. Anyway, when we were out for the day, at lunchtime, everybody else was looking for snacks. I didn't need a snack. My breakfast lasted me for the whole the whole day. So I think yeah. there's a comment there. It was strange to me to eat that food, but I do remember and laughing at my friends thinking, you were all laughing at me because I was eating this breakfast, but it yeah. served me well for the day. Mm -hmm. so, you know that 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 reminder that you made there about eating the healthy you know our own traditional foods um, mm -hmm. you know because that's what our but you know you know our, our, i suppose our genes are used to and if we if we remember that it's not it's not so abnormal to eat that food in the morning mm -hmm. yeah so, thanks for that reminder um another question that was asked uh i asked the question was why is raw oats better than cooked oats mm -hmm. well Raw oats, um, first of all, oats are rich in vitamins. You know, you have your thiamine, you have your magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, manganese, selenium, and iron. And some of these uh, uh, things, when, they're, when you cook them, you lose the nutrients, especially the vitamins. So it's, you can cook oats, it's okay. You can cook it for a few minutes or you can add it. It's always better to add it in hot water or just soak it in cold water. That's more nutritious. You get all the nutrients because it's not destroyed by heat or it's not reduced by heat. But the choice is yours. If you cook it, you're not losing too much uh, vitamins. But sometimes we tend to advise what we nutritionists do. So that's why I said raw, raw oats. Yeah. Is this when people, they soak it overnight? Is it that the overnight, the overnight oats I've heard people talk about? Is that when they yeah. soak it? Yeah, if you, you soak it overnight, and then also when you soak it overnight, sometimes there's some, some, some fermentation that goes on, and this fermentation produces what you call probiotics, which are good for your gut. Wow. So it's a traditional a thing that was done, you know, many, many years ago with our great grandparents. So it's actually very healthy to soak it overnight. Okay. Yes, okay. yeah. Thank, mm. you. Thank you very much. Let me mm. see if there's any other questions. Um, Carrie, can I make a comment? Um, there was a documentary on BBC. I didn't watch the full documentary. I just saw an excerpt of it where a doctor was talking about ultra processed foods. I don't know if anyone saw that documentary. And the point he was making was that, you know, evidence has recent research shows that with all those ultra processed foods, and when we talk about ultra processed foods, it's all these sausages and you know the bacon and the ham so the evidence shows that the ingredients that are used are made such that they always want you to to eat more and more you know there's something that is done with the processing 
that just is marketing. You know, there are, there are these very intelligent people out there who are making sure that we, you know, they need to sell their products. So there are certain ingredients that if you are reading the food labels, you would not have an idea what these things are, but it's added to make you just want to eat more and more and more. I haven't watched the whole documentary, but this doctor went on just ultra processed foods for a month or so. And he could really tell the difference in his, you know, just the way he was functioning. You know, it was, I think it was some sort of a test that he was doing. Mm -hmm. and he, felt he was yeah. really sleepy and tired and just realized that he went on and he was eating and eating and eating. So I like that when Alex said that, you know, the, the, the usual things that we know, all those, what we call the English breakfast and all those things that we always want to have, the bacon, the ham, those things shouldn't really be part of our meals at all. They, 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 they don't help us to just make, make us eat and eat and eat and then eventually lead to all sorts of um, unhealthy conditions for us, okay? Mm -hmm. So our yam, our plantain, our foods are fine, provided we add lots of vegetables to it, provided we are not cooking it for hours like we do. Mm -hmm. We'll be fine with our, our foods. Yeah, thank you for that, um, Hiba. Um, yeah, there's a documentary, I think it's, a, it's called a Super Size Me. I think if you've not watched it, watch it. And uh, it talks about this guy who goes on to a McDonald's diet and the sugar soda and for three, for I think like so many days. And it's, it, you actually experience exactly what happens, what happens to his blood tests and everything. And like Kiba says, yes, they actually, they, they, they research, they actually make sure that they put chemicals in these foods that make you addicted. If you don't eat it, you get a headache. And so you have to eat it. So, so when you eat something and you think like, oh, you don't have your coffee, you have a headache, we have a problem. It's not the food, it's not the coffee, we have a problem. So we have to also change our mindset. And remember, people are sick, people are sick. Don't just eat, you have to care about your body, you have to care about yourself. Show yourself some love, eat healthy, because if you don't eat healthy, in the long run, you are going to pay dearly you're going to pay dearly. So we want to avoid that. And that's why um, Khan is really, really trying so much to help all our African and Caribbean colleagues. Yeah. So thank you again, um, Alice. I've just got one more question here and somebody asked, can you soak the oats in cold milk overnight? Mm -hmm. Well, I've never tried to soak uh, uh, oats in cold milk overnight. Um, it probably just be the same because also if it is fresh milk, it means that the milk is also going to ferment if you leave it exposed overnight. And fermented milk is also very good for your gut. So why don't you try it and tell us about it next time? <laughs>